We uh, had uh, two practices last weekend on Monday, or on Friday and Sunday. We'll have uh, seven practices starting tonight, um, trying to juggle the times around finals and all those uh, academic issues that guys have to work through and being a student athlete. So our times uh, are, are off the charts a little bit. And, but uh, we'll go tonight and we'll go tomorrow morning. Then we'll go uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, um, Thursday, and then Thursday morning or Friday morning. Um, the guys will uh, practice and then uh, have a, a short break. We'll meet down in, on the 28th. Um, in New Orleans, we'll practice uh, uh, shortly after we arrive and get used to the facilities, the sites, uh, as far as practice-wise, and um, start really uh, game planning and full throttle on uh, uh, on uh, um, Monday, you know, because coaches have been out. But um, we've been running, lifting, doing all those things to – Try and stay in as much football shape as you can. I think last week the two practices had high energy, high tempo. Got to do a couple things with the young guys in scrimmage situations. What were good to, you know, do some tackling and blocking and those things. Just from a logistical standpoint, you having guys come back here and then everyone's chartering in New Orleans, or no, you're no. Guys meet? We'll have some guys, you know, depending on distance. Uh, uh, how far you are away from uh, Ann Arbor. Uh, you'll either meet us there or you'll meet us back here and we'll go uh, on the charter. Anybody, uh, you mentioned the young guys in the practices, anybody that you haven't talked about uh, catch your attention? In yeah, you know, I um, I think Chris Bryant, you know, is becoming a better uh, uh, guard, you know, blocking and uh, some of the power poles and, and those kind of things. So, you know, those those guys have been going on cards all year. So, um, you know, it's a very scaled down defense and offense. So, uh, you know, hopefully they uh, uh, their reactions take over and their fundamentals and techniques that they've got that work takes over. You do a lot with physical, you know, and pads and stuff in the, in fall camp. What, what about now? Is that a balance, or are you kind of gonna, this week is going to be pretty physical? Right? Yeah, it will be pretty physical Monday, Tuesday. Um, you know, uh, probably back it down a little bit on Wednesday, and then uh, uh, on Thursday. I mean, we'll be physical. I mean, we'll be in pads uh, of some sort, either you know, just mark shoulder pads and helmets or full pads, but. Uh, you know, we'll go uh, shoulder pads and helmets tonight, full pads tomorrow. Um, and then uh, Monday will be full. Uh, Tuesday will be full. And then uh, Wednesday we'll start backing it down. And then when we get into um, uh, New Orleans, we'll uh, uh, be um, a quick practice on that. I don't even know what day that is we get in, whatever it is, 28th. We'll um, go about 10 good periods and – just uh, really get them familiar with the locker room and, and all those the practice facilities and do some conditioning and run them a little bit, do some skelly, uh, do a couple switch periods, you know, so uh, we can refresh their memories on some of the things in the game plan. Are oh. there, are there any new wrinkles that you add that you maybe haven't used to this point or haven't used as much? Uh, as the there might be, you know. You, you, you look at things, and you know we've uh, some of the coaches have been in a little more, so they've got a little bit more of a head start uh, of breaking down the opponent. And others, you know, uh, were out for a good amount of the recruiting, so they haven't seen as much. But you know, you always look at something that you may be able to take advantage of. Will your offensive line look any different than it did the last game? Because possibly, I don't think so. I think pretty much, hopefully, the same. Obviously, this is a team sport, but when you see a guy you coach win a national award like the Remington, you know, what goes through your mind? Well, I'm happy for him. I mean, he's uh, worked hard, you know, in the weight room. He's worked hard in uh, the conditioning, the fundamentals, and all those things. So, you know, but I think David would be uh, the first one to tell you that, you know, it's uh, you're not on an island out there. There's a lot of help. 
can you see yourself coaching like Beamer did for has for as long as he has at the same spot? And oh, I don't know. <laughs> Never thought about it, to be honest with you. You know, it, uh, we, we don't want to leave Michigan. I know that. So, you know, hopefully we can um, stay here a long time. Do you feel like that's getting increasingly rare? We Probably. Yeah. Probably is. You know, media, 24-hour uh, news cycle, uh, you know, the whole um, money that's involved in, in the sport now. What does this bowl game mean for your uh, recruiting? Uh, I, that's a really good question. I think it always helps, you know, because, uh, you know, it's out there in front a little bit. I think when you're playing in a BCS bowl, I think that probably uh, uh, validates a little bit of what you're doing as a program and your university and what your university uh, is doing. You know, the um, I'm sure there'll be a great crowd of Michigan people in that stadium on the third. So I think it all probably uh, helps in, in those ways. Have you sensed that a little bit, the bump on the recruiting trail when you're out there, the 10 to 2 season? You know, we've uh, we've had, you know, a pretty good start to it. So uh, I don't know if it's a bump or anything like that. I mean, it's been consistent. Brady, uh, playing a game a month after your last game, what are the specific concerns you have with complacency, but also rustiness with Denard and with the defense? Um, I, I think you can get what you need to get back from a uh, physical standpoint. I think the, the, the mental attitude and how you approach it every day. You know, you just don't show up down there. You know, there's um, obviously a lot of distractions down on in New Orleans, you know, and Bourbon Street and all those things. And you know, we've got 18 to 23-year-olds and how they handle uh, themselves as a team, starting with the leadership of our seniors, uh, uh, you know, is always an important factor when you when you take 114 or how many ever were taken, you know, on a trip. But, you know, and then it's the focus and not being distracted by all the pats on the back and all, all the stuff that really, you know, is immaterial to – uh, how you play in the game and how you prepare. So you'd be more restricted with their freedom <coughs> in New Orleans versus a different fall site? Uh, I probably, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, but it's, you know, there's it's a great city and, and uh, you know, it's we're excited and all that. But, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of things for them to do that aren't involved with football. As a coach, when you, you find out where you're going, how much, I guess, planning into what distractions there are around goes, or is that kind of minor? In no, there's a great deal of the planning. I mean, uh, you know, from the practice facility you're going to use to the time limitations, how much you go um, in the stadium that you're going to play in, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, events, uh, that's why you want to try and get as much as everything done as you can. Um, but before you, you get there, and what I'm saying is your game plan and all that, and then so it's not new when you get to the site. So there, there's been a ton of planning involved, and Mike Vollmer and Bob Lopez, and, you know, we're down there for three or four days uh, uh, doing all that groundwork. Did you taper their, like, their curfew where it's? They get a later curfew and they yeah, I mean, you, you try and do that a little bit. You want them to enjoy, you know, they've. it's a reward as, as much as it is, you know, a chance to compete again. So, yeah, you try and uh, treat them like uh, uh, young men. Indoor game, is that something that you guys have – Anything is there anything changed because of that? Do you think you have an advantage, maybe in speed or anything like that? I don't think so. No, no I, it's – you know, we practice indoors. Uh, in here, I mean, it's different. The lighting will be different, you know, the space and obviously the environment, you know. But I, I don't think so. I mean, we're going to go in there twice just so, you know, you're catching balls and you're doing all that stuff and um, see how that affects or doesn't affect. I think the more you make out of it, the, the more it affects them. Do you anticipate everybody making the trip? Yeah, I think so. 
How are you on the injury front? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I mean, you've talked about the importance of, of it, every down back, and Virginia Tech's got one of the best in the country. Yeah, he's how, good. How dangerous is he, and you know, what do you do to stop? Well, him? you got you know, it starts at the line of scrimmage, like it always does. You know, our guys up front got to do a great job of. Uh, you know, attacking and uh, do a great job of uh, uh, really uh, getting off blocks at front seven. Uh, you got to support it right on the back end. So it doesn't change. And then getting bodies to the ball. I mean, it never changes. Uh, whoever the back is, you, you've got to do those basic fundamental things. Can you talk about what uh, a good showing the Sugar Bowl could do for this program for what you guys want to accomplish? Well, you, you want to win every game. And so, you know, Tim, you, you, good showing, bad showing, right? you know, I, you want to win. I mean, you're going to prepare against a, a football team. That's a daggone good football team. And, uh, uh, you know, they've got a great tradition. And Coach Beamer's done an excellent job, obviously, um, over many years. And so, um, you know, playing an opponent that uh, has uh, – you know, had a lot of success in Virginia Tech. It's going to be, you know, a challenge, and it's going to be fun. Earlier this year, you said you guys were looking to a sixth year for Morrell Evans. Is that still possible, or is that? Kind of I I don't think it is. Coach, have you started installing, or when do you guys start installing a game plan for Virginia Tech? Uh, some of it today, uh, but most of it will start, especially from the offensive side on uh, uh, Monday, a little more. And do you feel like having this much time is, you've talked about overcoaching and, uh, and outcoaching yourself. All right. Does having this much time, do you feel like that's an advantage or a disadvantage? Uh, I, I, you know, it's the same advantage they have. So I think we're all in the same, uh, um, you know, we're all in the same position to some degree. So, you know, they played one week later because of the championship game. But uh, uh, I, I don't see it being an advantage for anybody. Do you, do you have like an ideal time frame for like the perfect amount of time to prepare for an opponent? <laughs> Done a lot of different ways and been around it a lot of different ways. You know, we, we just like the format that we've used, uh, you know, what we used at San Diego State and kind of blueprint that a little bit uh, when you look at what you do and how much you do. What's the single most, uh, single best bowl prep you've ever been involved with and what was something that stuck out about it? I think uh, what we did uh, last year and how our kids, you know, um, I think we kept them fresh at the same time, challenged them and competed enough with them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, as you look at game planning, I think we got that to them early enough where they could really, you know, have a great understanding of it and uh, got enough reps at the different looks from one side of the ball or in the kicking game. Um, got enough looks to to uh, handle it. I thought that was – I thought what we did out there was pretty good. You've said that you're, you're happy with Denard's development throughout the year. Have you started thinking yet about – what you want him to do in the off season and, and uh, oh, pursuit of getting better for next year? Yeah, we'll you know we'll evaluate every guy on this team uh, about where they're at and what they need to improve on during the course before we get to spring football. You know, so that takes some individual um, commitment and in, uh, whether you're a guy in the secondary or you're a guy you know playing quarterback or a lineman, uh, we've got you know a lot that each guy will have to do, and it will be pretty specific about what they need to improve on. Greg, Greg said the other day that he'd be lying if he, if he didn't say that, that the defense exceeded at least his, his initial expectations. Can you say the same thing? I mean, did you have? You know, I, you know I, to be honest with you, Angelique, I never put – we know the expectations, and we didn't meet our expectations. You know, uh, we didn't win the championship. So – uh, did we improve on defense? Yeah, but you know that 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 that's great, and we want to keep improving, and we want to play with good fundamentals and technique and uh, demeanor and all those things. But you know, you you, the, you didn't win the Big Ten championship, so we didn't meet our expectations. Is there something that's a source of pride for you with this team? 
a real accomplishment. Yeah, I, I like how they, they respect each other. I like how they handle uh, some adversity in, in the middle of the season. I like how they've grown together. I like how the seniors have done a tremendous job of really taking a responsibility. And that's, you know, where it starts. Bernard. Bernard said with the staff infection last week, he was talking that uh, he didn't want anybody else to really know about it. Right. It sounds like his teammates didn't know. I mean, what what does that say to you about about Denard that he wanted to keep this kind of? Well, he, you know, he, the one thing he'll never do and has never done is give an excuse, and uh, uh, he doesn't want any excuses for uh, you know performance, good or bad. So, um, you know, it just tells you that he's humble and it. Tells you that uh, he he loves his teammates. You've said a lot this season that you're not playing Michigan football. What is that, and when do you think you'll get there? Well, I think when we run the ball effectively, consistently, uh, we knock people off the line of scrimmage. I think from a defensive standpoint, it's uh, uh, playing great run defense and, and uh, not giving up big plays and. Uh, and the special teams, you know, competing on every down. So um, that's what I see as Michigan defense and playing with a, a toughness. Play, Go ahead. Playing indoors, does that affect more the, the kickers than, than anybody? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> what do you think? I think it does. You think it's good or bad? I think it's better for them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm probably better for them. I'll have to agree with you. Oh, good. Sounds hard. Anything else? Have you, have you talked to uh, Will Hagrup at all about uh, the punting struggles? Uh, yeah, I talk to him every day when we, you know, we're practicing. And, you know, it's just consistency, you know, how you set the ball, where your hand is, and, and you know, the mental Im imagery of when you do it the right way and keeping that fundamentals and techniques. You know, I think uh, – uh, when Will thinks he has to, it's like, you know, I, I'm going to use an analogy, which probably is really bad because I don't golf and I'm really a bad golfer. But when you're at that longest uh, drive, you know, guys rear up and they want to try and kill it. Well, sometimes William does that, you know, with uh, his punting instead of, instead of having a consistent swing at the ball. Has Matt Weil been pushing him at all? In yeah, practice? no question. No question, and uh, we'll see who punts uh, in the bowl game. You know, I mean, uh, Matt's done a nice job. You know, and uh, we've got to get more field position returns off the punting game. So wait, is that competition realistically open, or is that yeah? Just... I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't. Last one back here. Oh, I was a little late. Can you just uh, talk about the game plan against Virginia Tech? Well, you know, we're just getting into it, just starting it. You know, uh, there's a lot to um, look at what they do and what they do well on both sides of the ball and, you know, in their special teams. I mean, that uh, Coach Beamer always gets your attention. So uh, we'll, we'll get it all uh, figured out uh, by Monday and uh, really on both sides of the ball start getting into that part of it with our switch personnel, you know, uh, look teams. Angelique has to have one more. <laughs> Can you evaluate what Schofield did this season? I mean, no, really nobody's talked about him very much. Maybe that's a good thing. Right. That probably is a good thing, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, I think he's grown. I think uh, he's improved. Uh, uh, I think he's really obviously better than he was at, than at the beginning. But I think Michael also has just really scratched the surface to – uh, you know, how he can play and, and uh, play offensive line at Michigan in that standard. Where do you see him fitting in the line next season? I mean, could you see him? Can we wait till after the bowl game? No, I mean, I figured you had some kind of idea projecting. Well, we'll see. 